So when you have something like this, where you've got this solid color and you want to select it so that you can then invert it to select the object, you use the magic wand tool. So the magic wand tool is also up in this little special dual tool section here, the quick selection tool and the magic wand. These are the two go-to powerhouses of selection in Photoshop. Look at the magic wand. Magic wand has a tolerance. I think 32 is the default. It means it's how wide does it look when you select the color. It also has a thing called contiguous. And anti-alias tries to smooth out the edges. Then you have something called sample all layers. That's turned off. We have only one layer here anyway, but sometimes you want to sample multiple layers. But where the default is contiguous, meaning it'll search for everything that you, that wherever you click here, it's going to look for everything that's blue that touches that area where you clicked. So it's going to look for all over here, but it won't look inside there because that's not contiguous. It's separated. And it won't look there. And probably won't look there if you see where I'm pointing. There's little spots where it probably won't look. But if I just click here once, boom, it found, that's what it found. That's what it selected. It didn't select down here, but it selected all that based on the tolerance. Now, right now, it's just on selection here. If I click again, it's going to deselect what I just did and just keep on making new selections. So that's the default behavior of the magic wand is to select once and not add to it. So if you click on this guy here, now from this point forward, we'll be adding to the selection every time I click. All right? Down here. And now we're much better off. I see that little spot there wasn't selected, so inside there. I did, this spot here wasn't selected, so inside there. That little blue there wasn't selected. Ooh, we got a little too far there. We'll fix that later. And maybe inside there wasn't selected. I think that's pretty good. I think we've made our selection. Now, because there's a little bit of frizz here, that it might not be perfectly selected. And so when there's a little bit of a frizzy edge to something, that's sometimes when you want to use the refine edge tool. So when you have a selection active like this, marching ants going all over the place, you can use, and, and a selection tool active, you can use the refine edge tool. Now right now I've selected the sky. I want to select the scarecrow. So before I do that, I need to invert the selection. Now a second ago, I, I inverted the colors, black and white, by doing control or command I. To invert a selection, it's control or command I plus shift. So control shift I. And that inverts the selection. So the invert is I, but inverting selection is shift I. So controller command shift I. So now it's, the marching ants are going around the scarecrow, which is what we want to do. Click on refine edge. And we'll open up this refine edge dialog here. It's not as cool as the one in, in the 2015 5.5 version, but it's still pretty cool. And the first thing is, you know, what do you want to see this thing against? And typically what you see it against is this uh, overlay. So that, now the overlay in the last one, you had the op option of adjusting how bright it was and how transparent it was. You don't have the option here. And I'm looking, I'm seeing little kind of a goofy looking little stuff there where the blue is kind of coming through there a little bit. So I want to refine the edge. And this refine, it's called, this, this little guy's called refine radius tool, refine edge tool, is the way to do that. You ask Photoshop to look at this a little bit more carefully and see if you can look for edges a little more carefully. So I'm going to zoom in on there so I can see them. I'll do Control or Command Plus a couple times. It zooms in on an image. Hold on the space bar like this. So I got the Refine Edge tool active by default. You see that it's highlighted in gray there. And it's kind of large. Hold on the Alt or the Option key. Right click. Drag it to make it smaller. And I'm going to say look. I'm going to say Photoshop look more carefully right there. And notice what happened. The blue went away. Look more carefully here. Again it's fixing it. And there. Cool, isn't that neat? It's, I'm telling it, do more work on these particular spots right there. And it's, boy, it's paying off. Isn't that something? I'm not sure how well you can see that. Yeah, you can probably see it on your, those edges that need to be fixed a little bit, so I'll drag right along the edge there, see how that works. Oh, man, look at that. Isn't that something? I'll tell you, the wizards at, at Adobe, despite the fact that I've got a crash on mine, look at what it's doing there. Hold on the space bar, drag it up. So again, this is because I saw that there was some kind of little sort of frizzy edges to things. I want to tell Photoshop, work harder on this particular spot here. And it's working, isn't that something? Uh, I should stop saying that something. I'm, I'm going to do, you can only step back with Controller Command Z once. You can't go more than once. So I'm going to select back a couple times here. Oops, that won't work here. Well, that, that's just inverse. Never mind, sorry. Close that down. 
thought I could step back and notch it too, but I can't. Um, right there. That's better. Right along the edge of the pants there. Could be better. Oh, it's much better. Again, I should stop being so amazed. Uh, right there. So this is how you would deal with this extra little bit of frizz here. And I'll show you a faster way to do this with that woman's hair in a little while. Very good. So now we have this. Now we're a happy, happy camper. I think we've done a better job. I'm going to do controller command zero so I can see the whole thing. Now I better do some work here. That's a mess. Probably should, I could repair a few more things, but I think that's pretty good. And so now that we've done this, I'm not going to worry about adjusting edges. You typically do that if you have uh, some sh hard, sharp edges, let's say buildings and things like that. I'm not worried about that here. But I do want to output to something other than the background. So I need to go to output to a new layer with a layer mask. And then I click OK. And it gives me a new layer with a layer mask. And it turns off the background so you can sort of see your work there. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Jeff Sangstack, an Adobe Certified Expert and the Lead Instructor here at BlueEffects.net. If you want to watch this entire video lesson, as well as other live classes and After Effects crash courses, then I invite you to check out the Blue Effects After Effects Academy. Just click the link below this video to find out what we've prepared for you in the After Effects Academy.